Welcome collectors and diecast enthusiasts. You have joined me for another edition of Diecast Emporium Military Mondays. In this installment, as you can tell from the title and the vehicles you see in front of you, we are going to be taking a look at the Humvee. But before we do, as always, Military Mondays on Diecast Emporium are brought to you by my friends at SmallScaleHobbies.com. Make sure you check them out for all of your military modeling needs. In fact, I purchased most of the Humvees that you will see in today's video from my friends at SmallScaleHobbies.com. All right, let's talk a little bit about the Hummer or the Humvee. So, the vehicle has been in service with the U.S. military since 1983. Humvee is actually HMMWV. It's an acronym for High Mobility Multipurpose Wheeled Vehicle. In essence, it's a light four-wheel drive military utility truck produced by AM General. This vehicle largely replaced what the Jeep purposes were. Um, obviously, you guys are familiar with what the Jeep has done for World War II, through Vietnam, even up until the early part of the 1970s. So the Hummers or the Humvees have seen action in every major conflict from the 1980s to present, including Panama, both Gulf Wars, Somalia, peacekeeping operations in Eastern Europe, and Afghanistan. Speaking of Afghanistan, and this is probably where I'm going to go on a tangent, so bear with me a little bit here, but it is critical to this vehicle. Afghanistan and Iraq highlighted this vehicle's extreme vulnerability in urban combat zones. The Humvee was not designed to do all of the tasks that the military was putting it through. Um, when we got to Afghanistan, when we got to especially Iraq, our enemies are not stupid. They would study our tactics. They would target our light-skinned and light-armored vehicles, which is exactly what the Humvee is, because they knew they couldn't take on an M1 Abrams tank. They knew they couldn't fight an Apache attack helicopter. But they knew they had a relatively decent shot of scoring a knockout hit if they could hit a Humvee or a gasoline tanker or a cargo truck in the right spot. But even more crucially, in, in Iraq in 2003 and beyond, IEDs, or improvised explosive devices, really, really did a number on these things um, and cost the lives of a lot of American servicemen and women. While all this was happening, the Humvee was constantly trying to combat the threat, introducing up-armored kits, uh, bullet-resistant windows, run-flat tires, but it just wasn't enough. So, finally, the U.S. came to its senses and realized the Humvee is outdated, we just can't use it anymore. So, the Joint Light Tactical Vehicle Program was initiated, and that's why you have all of the different Oshkosh LATV vehicles and the MRAP vehicle families those vehicles are much better suited for combat in urban environments and cities because they are better resistant and have a higher sustainability factor uh, and high survivability factor uh, if they're hit by a mine, if they're hit by an IED, or if they're hit with a rocket-propelled grenade, chances are the occupants inside are going to live, and that is the key. So, that's my dissertation on the Humvee. I love this truck. I love this vehicle. Um, but it is incredibly outda outdated. It is incredibly dangerous. And that is why it is mostly, mostly, been relegated to military police work, utility work around the base. Um, and it has, for the most part, been pulled from active duty. But you will still see some National Guard and Reserve units uh, driving around in the Humvee. Okay, so let's take a look at five different variations of the Humvee in model form. All of these are by Rocco Mini Tanks. This is what the box looks like. These are all kits from several decades ago. They are very difficult to find, and they are very expensive. The box style is the same. Orange background, Rocco Mini Tanks. The pieces that you see in here are all of the different accessories that comes with these. It, I can't really understate this enough. These things come with a ton of accessories, whether it's mirrors, um, weapons that you can put on these brush guards, tow hitches. You can spend an entire Saturday afternoon just having fun with one of these model kits. You're not done when you pop the package open and take the model out. There is so much more to do. 
All right, for the first variation we'll take a look at, it is the M997 Maxi Ambulance. This is obviously the medical version of the Humvee. Uh, this one was the only one that I had that was green. You can see telltale green underneath it. Uh, that I did spray this in Tamiya light sand. This is almost finished. It is not finished. Uh, but I did add the mirrors. I did add some lights, turn indicators, the lifting eyes on the roof. Again, those are all extras that are included on the accessory spruce. Here is a trailer hitch as well. I apologize about my hand uh, bringing in a little bit of shadow there. I have not added the decals for the cross on the side again and on top, which you would see on this typically. But other than that, I'm pretty satisfied with how it turned out. It does need a little bit of paint finishing on it, but for the most part, it looks pretty darn good. So that is the ambulance variation, again, the M997. Now, when you think of the Humvee, this is probably the version that you think of the most and what comes to your mind if you had to picture it. This is the M1036, which is the tow missile carrier version. Uh, the slant back version of the Humvee. Really, you can put a tow missile launcher on top, but you could also put a Mark 19 or a 50 cal um, machine gun, really whatever you want. And these vehicles have uh, definitely had all of those on it over the course of history. And you can see this is this highlights exactly what I was saying earlier. This is the type of vehicle that when we first went into Afghanistan and we first went into Iraq for the second time, there is no armor. There is basically no up armored kit on this at all. You don't have the enhanced armor underneath it. So these were very, very, very dangerous vehicles to be in. And I have nothing but the utmost respect for the um, men and women who went into battle with uh, inside one of these vehicles. I guarantee you it probably wasn't a great time for them. This is my, again, my favorite version of it. I haven't done anything to this in terms of the model. I plan to do a lot to it. And if I can ever find you know, a handful of these, I'd like to do them in several different colors. Like, it's nice to have a tan one, but I'd also like to do one in maybe the, the NATO camouflage that would ref, uh, reflect a Humvee uh, from the early 90s, so that would be nice too. Okay, next, we have the M1037 Shelter Carrier. That's what this device is. You can remove that if you want to and just have a pickup version. But to put it back on, this is what it looks like. You can see it has some details in the casting at the back, including a jerry can at the top. There you go. All right, our next version is the M1038 Cargo Carrier. So this has a tarp at the back, which you obviously, thus the name, would put some cargo in the back. Obviously, you could haul some gear and guys, too, if you wanted to. And this is removable as well. The mirrors that are included with these, I do want to point out, you can either have the mirrors that are on this, which are the mirrors that come straight out, or you can have the earlier style Humvee mirrors that curve, and I'm sure the veterans and everybody that's in the military models, you guys know what I'm talking about. Basically, the, the two different types of Humvee era mirrors, both are included, uh, at least in every single one of these sets that I have. And then the last version that we will take a look at, and yes, the trailer did come with this set. This is the M1038 Troop Carrier. So this is the troop carrier, that's the cargo carrier. They are both designated M1038s. And again, this tarp is removable as well if you wanted to see what that looks like. So there you go, collectors and friends. That concludes another edition of Diecast Emporium Military Mondays here on my channel. I really hope you guys have been enjoying these videos. I know I have. It really allows me to bring two of my biggest passions together in one video. Obviously, military history and scale models. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know down in the comments section below. If you are new here, please be sure to hit that subscribe button as we upload videos weekly. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Until next time, take care, be well, and be safe. I will see you in the next review.